G'day guys, Mark from TAT the Automotive Technician. Today I'd like to share with you a TAT Tech Tip. You would have to agree that times have changed. Not only are we pushed to the limit with our skills and training, but also our equipment. Our testing equipment has changed over the years. If we want to have any diagnostic skills whatsoever, we need the equipment to do that. One such tool to help us along the path is the use of a thermal camera. Whether you buy a simple one attached to your phone or a really expensive $3,000 one, they still work the same. No doubt a lot of you guys already have a thermal camera, but are you putting it to its best use? What's it capable of? Just the other day I was able to solve an overheating issue on an Audi A1 that had already had the thermostat replaced, genuine thermostat mind you, and I was able to pinpoint the problem with the thermal camera, and I ended up replacing the entire unit. And it's what, 21 degrees? Doesn't look like that's opening at all, does it? Like on that side of it, it's hot this side, but not that side of it. So that's kind of weird, isn't it? Maybe that's the reason. Might be uh, they didn't do both thermostats. Perhaps they just did one of them. And, uh, you know, that might be the cause of it. And now with hybrids and EVs becoming more common, the use of a thermal camera is invaluable whether it's checking out an octo valve to see if it's operating properly, or perhaps an inverter converter to see if there's any shorted components within. Using a thermal camera will make your diagnostic path a lot easier. Did you realize that you could find a water leak in your car simply by turning on the heaters, getting the inside as hot as possible, and then using the thermal camera from the outside to see where the heat is leaching out? Now, of course, this has been a bit hard to find simply because of uh, the location of that vent. It's in behind the uh, rear bumper itself, but you can see there's definitely a hot spot there, can't you? Um, we're measuring about 18 degrees. I had 20 something degrees there before, and you can see just above the bumper there, um, there's our bumper there. If we come back there, you can see just above it and below it, you can see the white leaching out. I've taken the bumper bar off to see if I can find that leak. And are you ready for the big reveal? Remember I showed you that it had been stoved in the side here. I don't know, it looks like a semi rolled into the thing or something. And it's actually dented this area here. But if you have a look, it's actually dented this area down here as well. And if we can see, uh, it's actually folded in just in here. And of course the water's gonna travel down here and then dribble down the bottom, etc., etc. So I'd say that this is the problem here. Even when we're looking for a parasitic drain, the thermal camera can be used. Simply by coming across our fuse box there, you can see the relay is live. Now I've turned on the park lights just to give you an indication of what it would look like if there was a circuit that was live that we were looking for. You can see it's lit up like a Christmas tree. Sometimes you need to put your hand in there just to give it a comparison um, so that it doesn't uh, look for a single heat source. But in this case, the park lights have been on for a little while and you can see that that relay is quite hot. So it's a good indicator for a parasitic drain. Another example of a parasitic drain is when Brendan Sorensen was able to use the thermal camera to isolate a module that was not going to sleep and therefore draining the battery overnight. So going around and looking for any um, drawers on this thing, it's been sitting for a good few hours now. The engine's still warm so that's throwing bits off. You'll see how it's hard to see because um, everything's quite cool, but if you give it a reference, say put my hand in the picture, so everything goes quite cool now and makes it a lot easier. I'm looking around here and I got up to the mirror, and even when I, I have my hand there, you'll see that mirror is cooking. If I came out to the front, the mirror, even with my hand as a, as a reference, let's move it out of the way, see that thing. So when I touch the center point of that mirror, it is, it is hot, it's red hot. So I think we found our draw. So by using this thermal camera, it made his diagnostic path a lot easier. For those of us that do electronic repairs, a thermal camera is invaluable to look on the board and see where there's a hot spot where there might be an individual component that is created a short or drawing too much current. As you can see over here, there's a severe hot spot. It's getting hotter and hotter. There's 101. I had it up to 110 before I started recording this. So in this particular area, let's have a look and see what is actually in that area. We'll just press our button and we can see it looks like cables, etc. But if we sneak over on the side, you can see that there is in actual fact 
a, uh, a transistor on the side there. So don't get caught out by that tool truck guy that comes along and sells you an expensive tool and promises the earth and you don't even read the instructions. A lot of the time, tools can be used for things that we can't even think of right now. To get the best use of your thermal camera, read the instructions carefully. Have a look at forums, have a look at YouTube videos. Also, there's Facebook pages dedicated to the use of a thermal camera. I hope this tip has helped you and fired you up to use your thermal camera in the future to make your diagnostic path a lot easier. In the meantime, guys, have a look at repair solutions on the TAT website. There could be a solution on there that's gonna make your day a lot easier. In the meantime, until we catch up on another video, this is Mark from TAT signing off. I'll catch you later.